Evans Electronics is concerned about low retention rate of employees. In recent years, management has seen a turnover of 10% of hourly employees. Thus, for any hourly employee chosen at random, management estimates a probability of 0.1 that the person will leave the company this year. Choosing three employees at random, this is the number of trials, what is the probability that three of them, the number of successes is the number that follows the phrase, what is the probability? We'll leave the company this year. We'll leave the company this year is quote unquote success. Hence, the probability of success is 0.1 because 0.1 of the people chosen at random will leave the company this year. This means will not leave the company this year is a failure. Now write what we know. We know the probability of success leaving the company is 0.1. The number of trials is 3. And the number of these 3 that are successes is 3. We plug these into the equation, the binomial equation. Notice that x is in red font in this equation. This is done because x can be equal to 0, 1, 2, or 3. The other letters represent fixed numbers, n equal 3 and p equal 0.1. Three people are picked at random from the company directory. We want the probability that all three will leave the company within the next year. If all three of the three that were picked leave the company, then none will remain. The first part of the binomial equation is circled in red and highlighted in yellow. It represents the number of different sequences providing three successes and zero failures. There's only one sequence for three successes and zero failures. Success, success, success. That's why this red circle, the value of it equals one, which is why that is equal to one. The next part of the equation is the probability of success. Notice we have three successes and we're that is in the exponent of 0.1. So essentially what this oval is doing is it's taking 0.1, multiplying it by itself, and then multiplying it again by 0.1. In this last oval, we have 0.9 raised to the zero power, and anything raised to the zero power is 1. That is a fancy way of saying 1. This is a fancy way of saying 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1, and that's a fancy way of saying 1. So all that we're doing here is applying the product rule. So the probability of three of the three people chosen at random leaving the company is 0 0.001. Outcomes of a binomial distribution can be diagrammed using a tree diagram. In stage one, the first worker chosen can either stay or leave. Given the first worker will leave, the second worker can stay or leave. Given the first and second workers leave, the third worker can stay or leave. If all three workers leave the company, x equals 3. The probability of leave and leave and leave equals 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.0010. This is the number This is the same number we computed on the previous slide using the binomial probability distribution function. If the first two workers leave, but the third one stays, x equals 2. The probability of leave and leave and stay equals 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.9, which equals 0 0.009. Given the first worker leaves, but the second person stays, the third worker can stay or leave. If the first worker and the third workers leave, but the second stays, x is equal to 2. The probability of leave and stay and leave equals 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.0090. If the first worker leaves, but the second and third stay, x equals 1. 
the probability of leave and stay and stay equals 0.1 times 0.9 times 0.9, which equals 0 0.0810. Given the first worker stays, the second worker can stay or leave. Given the first worker stays but the second one leaves, the third worker worker can either stay or leave. If the first worker stays but the second and third leave, x equals 2. The probability of stay and leave and leave equals 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 which equals 0 0.0090. If the first worker and third stay but the second leaves, x equals 1. The probability of stay and leave and stay equals 0 0.9 times 0.1 times 0.9, which is equal to 0 0.0810. Given the first two workers stay, the third could stay or leave. If the first two workers stay, but the third leaves, x equals 1. The probability of stay and stay and leave equals 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.0810. If the three workers stay, x equals 0. The probability of stay and stay and stay equals 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 which is equal to 0 0.7290. Since there are three sequences of one success and two failures, and each of these sequences have the same probability of occurring 0 0.0810, the value in the red oval would be equal to 3 because there are three sequences of one success and two failures. The value in the red oval is equal to 0 0.0810. All that the binomial distribution function does is it takes the number of sequences, in this case 3, and multiplies by the probability of each sequence which are identical. Adding up these probabilities yields the probability of leave and stay and stay plus the probability of stay and leave and stay plus the probability of stay and stay and leave which equals 0.243. This is the exact same number we'd get if we used the binomial probability distribution function with x equal to 1, n equal to 3, and p equal to 0.1. To compute the expected value and variance of a binomial probability distribution. We can use the following equations or the following shortcuts. The expected value mu equals the number of trials times probability of success. The variance takes the mu and multiplies it by the probability of failure. n times p mu times 1 minus p the probability of failure. Standard deviation is just the positive score root of the variance. In the Evans electronic example, n equals 3 and p equals 0.1. Hence, the expected value is 3 times 0.1, which is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 employees out of 3 are expected to leave over the course of the year. The variance is equal to 3 times 0.1 times 1 minus 0.1, which is 0.27. The standard deviation is just a positive square root of the variance which equals 0.5196. We're going to use the following equations to verify that the shortcut equations are actually giving the correct values for the expected value and the variance of a binomial probability distribution function. To compute the expected value, we first must compute the products of the values of x and their respective probabilities. The probabilities 0 0.729, 0 0.243, 0 0.027, 0 0.001 were either found using the binomial equation or the tree diagram that we uh, demonstrated earlier. The first product is 0 times 0.729, which is 0 0.000. The second product is 1 times 0.243, which is 0.243. The third product is 2 times 0 0.027, which is 0 0.054. The final product is 3 times 0 0.001, which is 0 0.003. Summing that up gives us an expected value of 0.3, which is the same expected value that we got using the shortcut equation.
To verify the shortcut variance is actually given us the correct value for the variance, we complete the following table. With a mean, mean equal to 0.3, we subtract it from 0 to get the first deviation from the mean, which is negative 0.3. We subtract 0.3 from 1 to get the second deviation from the mean, which is 0.7. We subtract 0.3 from 2 to get the third deviation from the mean, which is 1.7. We subtract 0.3 from 3 to get the fourth deviation from the mean, which is 2.7. Then we square the first deviation from the mean, the second squared deviation from the mean, the third deviation from the mean, and the fourth deviation of the mean. 2.7 times 2.7 is 7.29. Next, we want to take the square deviation from the mean and multiply by its respective probability. Remember, the probability comes from the binomial distribution function. We plug in <clears throat> n equal 3, p equal 0.1 into the binomial distribution function, and then we plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3, and out comes 0 0.729, 0 0.243, 0 0.027, and 0 0.001. So the first product is 0 0.0656. We multiply 0 0.49, the second square deviation from the mean, times its probability. We get 0 0.1191. We take the third square deviation from the mean, 2.89, multiply it by its probability, 0 0.027, and we get 0 0.0780. We take the fourth square deviation from the mean, 7.29, multiply it by its probability, and we get 0 0.0073. The variance is the sum of this column, which was the same when we used the shortcut equation. The standard deviation is the positive square root of 0 0.27, which is 0 0.5196. We can use the binomial equation to compute the probability of winning the pick three lottery for the evening draw, one dollar, and exact order. In this lottery, I've chosen number five from a list of ten numbers. One from a list of ten numbers, and two from a list of ten numbers. Because I checked exact, the ping pong balls have to come out in order 5, 1, 2 for me to win $500. Since there are 10 ping pong balls in each jar, the probability of getting a number correct is 1 divided by 10. So the probability of success on each trial is 0.1. Since you pick three numbers and each of these comes from jars containing numbers printed on 10 ping pong balls, there are three independent trials. Since you have to pick all three to win, all three picks have to be successes. None can be failures. Substituting these values into the binomial probability distribution function yields, which simplifies to one, there's only one sequence that wins, times 0.1 raised to the power of three. This is the probability of a given sequence. And equals 0 0.001. Hence the probability you win is 0 0.001, but the probability you lose is 0 0.999. To compute your expected winnings, you add the product of how much you lost and its probability to how much you win and its probability. The probability of winning is 0 0.001, which can be denoted by f of $499 equal to 0 0.001. The probability of losing is 0 0.99, which can be denoted f of minus one dollar equal to 0 0.999. Hence your expected winnings are minus one dollar times 0 0.99 plus four ninety nine dollars times 0 0 0.001, which equals negative 50 cents. So if you buy 20 tickets a week on average, you are losing $10 a week. This means the government has induced you into voluntarily paying an additional tax of $10 a week, which amounts to $520 a year. A Poisson distributed random variable is often useful in estimating the number of occurrences over a specified interval of time or space. It is a discrete random variable that may assume an infinite sequence of values starting at zero and increasing by one. That is, 
x can be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yada, yada, yada. Examples include the number of knot holes on an 8 foot long 2x4, or the number of vehicles arriving at a toll booth in one hour. A Poisson experiment has two properties. The probability of an occurrence is the same for any two intervals of equal length. The occurrence or not occurrence in any interval is independent of the occurrence or not occurrence in any other event interval. The Poisson probability distribution function is f of x equal mu, the mean, raised to the x power times e to the minus mu, again mu is the mean, divided by x factorial. f of x is the probability of x occurrences in an interval of space or time. Mu is the mean number of occurrences in an interval. E is the number 2.71828, yada, yada, yada. In the example, patients arrive at the emergency room of Mercy Hospital at the average rate of 3 every 30 minutes on the weekend. This is mu, which is given in every Poisson problem. What is the probability of 4 arrivals in 30 minutes on a weekend evening? 4 is the number of occurrences denoted by the letter x. The value of x always follows the phrase, what is the probability? Mu is equal to 3 and x is equal to 4. Plugging these into the Poisson probability distribution function, f of 4 is equal to 3 raised to the power of 4 times the natural number of e raised to the negative 3 divided by x factorial in this case 4 factorial which is equal to 0 0.1680 in every Poisson problem mean mu is given a property of the Poisson probability distribution function is that the mean and variance are equal in this example the mean equals the variance which equals 3 the standard deviation is the square root of 3 we're going to use these equations to verify that property in the table below since we computed f of 4 already, it is listed. To compute the mean, we must first compute the products of the values of x and the respective probabilities, f of x. x equal to 4 times its probability, f of 4, which is equal to 0 0.1680, is 0.6721. To compute the probability of x equals 0, or f of 0, we substitute 0 into the Poisson probability distribution function that is in the top right hand corner. Doing this yields f of 0 equal to 0 0.0498. Multiplying this probability by x, evaluating the Poisson probability distribution function at x equal 1 yields f of 1 equal to 0.1494. Multiplying this probability by x equal 1 yields 0.1494. Evaluating the Poisson probability distribution function at x equal 2 yields f of 2 equal to 0 0.2240. Multiplying this probability by x equal 2 yields 0.4481. Evaluating the Poisson probability distribution function at x equal 3 yields f of 3 equal to 0.2240. Multiplying this probability by x equal 3 yields 0.6721. Summing this column yields 1.9147, which is not equal to the mean of 3. Because a Poisson random variable can take on infinite many numbers starting at 0 and increasing by 1, we need to add more values of x in the table, which I do here. Plugging 11 into the Poisson distribution function, yields f of 11 equal to 0 0.0002. Multiplying that probability by 11 equals 0 0.0024. Plugging x equal 12 in the probability distribution function gives a probability or f of 12 equal to 0 0.0001. Multiplying that by 12 gives 0 0.0007. Summing that up yields an expected value approximately equal to 3. The sum of this column will never equal 3, 
it just gets really, really, really close to 3 because x takes on infinite many values. This table will help us verify that the variance of the Poisson probability distribution function is mu, in this case mu equal 3. The first thing we have to do is we have to take the mean mu 3, subtract it from 0. When we do that we get minus 3.00. Squaring the first deviation from the mean, minus 3 squared, equals 9. Multiplying that 9 by the probability f of 0, which equals 0 0.0498, yields 0 0.4481. Minus 2 comes from taking 3 and subtracting it from 1. Squaring minus 2 gives 4. 4 times f of 1, the probability that x equal 1, which is 0 0.1494, equals 0.5974. Minus 1 here comes from subtracting 3 from 2. Squaring minus 1 yields 1. 1 times f of 2, or the probability that x equal 2, which is 0 0.2240, is 0 0.2240. Subtracting 3 from 3 gives 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 times f of 3 0 0.2240 is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times f of 4, 0 0.1680, is 0 0.1680. Some of this column does not give you 3. It should give you 3, but again, x in a Poisson distribution can take on infinite many numbers, so we need more x's. 8 is from subtracting 3 from 4. 8 squared is 64. 64 times f of 11 is 0 0.0141. This 9 comes from subtracting 3 from 12. 9 squared is 81. 81 times f of 12 is 0 0.0045. When we have x up to 12, the variance is approximately equal to 3. Yet again, it will never equal 3 because, again, x can take on infinite many values. So it gets closer and closer and closer to 3.